In this video, we will start a brand new section, the section of functions. And it's one of the biggest sections in our math syllabus. The first thing that I find all students need a good foundation is, is just understanding the different types of functions. So there are four main types that we look at in grade 11, starting here with the first one, the straight line graph, and that's one that we were introduced to already in grade nine. Then we met the graph called the parabola. Um, last year, we had a look at how we would move that parabola up and down. And this year, we're also gonna move it side to side. So the straight line has a standard formula of y equals mx plus c, and the parabola's formula is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And when we do the video specifically on parabolas, then we're going to look at some different ways to write that. But for now, the minute you see a square, this is also known as a quadratic function. And that makes sense because it's a quadratic equation. Then we have a look here. The one that has two arms, that's known as a hyperbola. And the cool thing about hyperbolas is that they have got asymptotes. So an asymptote is a line that a function approaches but never touches. I always like to think of it as kind of like electric fence of a graph. So you can get very, very close, but you can never touch and you cannot cross that, uh, that asymptote. So this is the formula here for a hyperbola, the standard equation of the graph. Okay, and in a hyperbola, your x is always in the denominator of an equation. And then lastly, if you've got x in the exponent, then you are dealing with an exponential graph. And this graph is very commonly seen in things like bacterial growth. If you plan to do a career in science, you will definitely see that happening. Okay, and it also has an asymptote, but just the one asymptote. So that line there, which is linked to the Q value. Okay, so we're going to look at each of these functions independently. But before we dive into the straight line, which is what we're going to be looking at today, let's just make sure we have a good understanding of function notation. So this here is what we would call function notation. We write it like this, f and then in brackets x. When we read it or we say it, we say f of x. Okay, and what that means is that we have called our line, our parabola, our whatever, we've given it a name, f, okay? f is the most common one just because function starts with f, but you can give it any letter of the alphabet. And because x and y go together on the Cartesian plane, it's almost like we want to know what does this function do as the x value changes. So it's a function of its x value. Okay, and something that I'm really hoping you learned last year is that f of x is the same as y. So we can say in the same light here, y equals 12x minus 15. And it's still y is a function then of this x value. Okay, function notation is important because we might want to know what does y do when f is equal to 7, for example. So then we'd say f of 7. So now everywhere I see an x, I'm going to substitute with the number 7. So we're going to have 12 multiplied by 7 minus 15, and that would give me an answer. Okay, so if ever you see function notation, understand that it still means y, and if you picture the Cartesian plane, it's your x and your y coordinates at any given point. Let's take a look at a couple of things in terms of straight line graphs. So the first thing we like to do with all of our functions is we like to look at the standard form of the equation. Okay, and so we know this one well, y is equal to mx plus c. The m value refers to the gradient of a line and the c value is the y intercept. Okay, and that leads us to the next point there. What are intercepts and how do we get them? Okay, well, you have two types of intercepts in a straight line graph. You've got an x-intercept 
And to get that, we let y equal 0. Okay, and if you picture the Cartesian plane and you picture the x-axis, you'll see y does equal 0 whenever there's an intercept there. Okay, and then you get a y-intercept, and to get that, we let x equal 0. Okay, then a straight line has also got a domain and a range. So domain is the x values for which this function exists. Now, I always find it helpful to actually look at the graph while determining the domain and the range. So domain, we said were the x values, range the y values for which this function exists. Now, if you have a look at these two arrows, they actually tell us that this graph is going to go on forever in this direction, which is growing in the x and the y direction, and it's going to go on forever in that direction, again, growing x and y. And so domain and range in terms of a straight line graph is very simple. You can simply say x is an element of any of the real numbers, or if you wanted to, you could indicate that it is between minus infinity and infinity, that is just another way of saying that x is true for all values there. Okay, and exactly the same is true for the y, the range. y is also an element of the real numbers when it comes to straight line graphs. Let's look at an example now. We are asked to sketch the graph of f of x equals 2x plus 1. So what we need to do for all graphs a good place to start is to think about what we are looking at in our equation. So we've got an m value, the gradient of this graph is 2, and the y-intercept we can see there is 1. That's what our standard form of the equation tells us. Okay, we can work out the intercepts so that we can draw this. So if we want an x-intercept, remember that we let y equal 0, and so we'll have 0 is equal to 2x plus 1. We can then move this 1 across, so we'll have minus 1 equals 2x. I like to keep x positive, but it doesn't really matter, um, as long as you've got x on one side and everything else on the other side. We can then divide both sides by 2, and we'll be left with the fact that x is equal to minus a half. Okay, now to get the y-intercept, we could let x equal 0 and we would get to the same answer, but it is nice and easy to get a y-intercept when your equation is in the standard form because you can simply read it there. The c value is the y-intercept, so y is equal to 1. Okay, and that's essentially all that we need to draw a straight line graph. So we can now say y is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus a half, and then we can get out our rulers and draw this line. So let's do that. Once we've drawn it, it's good practice to add your arrowheads and make sure that your axes are labeled. So either you've labeled this whole system of axes, or in this instance, this minus a half is not labeled, even if I were to do that. So I'm going to specifically label that coordinate. Okay, and we also need to label our function. So that is the graph of f. If you want to, you can write the whole equation down but it's enough to just put that letter there. So there we have sketching a nice and easy straight line graph. Now we are given um, a function here. We've got a straight line and we've got two points on that straight line. One thing worth noting here is that one of the points is an x-intercept. Okay, we know that because y is equal to zero and because we can see that it cuts the x-axis there at that point. Okay, now if ever we are asked to determine the equation of a function, then it's very important that we know the standard form because that always needs to be the first step. So step one, when I'm asked to determine the equation of a line, is I say y is equal to, and then I put the equation down. Now this is a straight line, so y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, what do I know about this? I know something about m, and I know something about C. M is the gradient of the line. So gradient is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we can substitute in. We can choose which points we would call 2 and 1. So let's call this x2, y2. And let's call this x1, y1. 
Okay, so y2, 2, minus y1, 0, over x2, minus 2, minus x1, that's going to be 2. So we then end up with 2 minus 0 over minus 2 minus 2, and that gives us minus a half there as the gradient value. Okay, C is the y-intercept. So now I head over to my graph and I look for it, and it is not labeled. So I'm going to need to have another plan there. So far, what I know about this line is that y is equal to minus a half x plus c. And I also know the coordinates of some points on this line, minus 2 and 2, and 2 and 0. So I can use those to substitute in for x and y, and then I can solve for c. So we will then end up with 0 is equal to minus a half times 2 plus c. Minus a half times 2 is going to end up being minus 1 plus c is equal to 0. And then we're going to move this minus 1 over. It's going to become positive, And we'll see that c is equal to 1. And now I've got a c value and an m value. And so I know what the equation is here. So therefore, y is equal to minus a half x plus 1. That is the equation of that line. Let's write it there next to the line. Now, there are two special cases that we need to know about when it comes to these lines. And I'm sure you will have seen them before. So I just quickly want to refresh your memory. The one is a line that cuts only the y-axis. And the other is a line that cuts only the x-axis. A line that cuts only the y-axis will only have a y-value wherever you look at it. No matter what x is equal to, it's going to have the same y-value. So there's no gradient here. Things are not changing and gradually becoming more or less in terms of y. Okay, and so this line's equation, let's say it cuts here at y is equal to 3. Then this line simply has the equation y equals 3. Okay, in a similar way, if you look at this x-line, let's say it cuts here at the point minus 5, then this line, the gradient is so steep that it would be undefined. Okay, If you remember from your analytical geometry, this would be interesting, you would say arctan of 90 degrees because it's perpendicular, and you would discover that it's undefined. And so this line doesn't have an m value, doesn't have a gradient, and you can see it's not having a y-intercept anywhere. So I like to just call these x lines, and this is the line x equals minus 5. So two very simple cases. And then lastly, on these um, straight lines, it's important to note two things. When lines are parallel, they have equal gradients. And where lines are perpendicular to one another, their gradients multiply and give an answer of minus one. So these things come up every now and again and it's so important. We're going to get to a point where we combine all of our knowledge and we're going to put different types of functions onto one Cartesian plane. But these are the little things that if you don't know them very well, they can trip you up and I don't want that to happen. So that is a nice overview there of the straight line graph.